What's up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about the soft spoken, yeah, absolute savage Brian Gregorio, or some of y'all might know him as the Honey Badger here at Texas Third Coast MMA. In this video, we're going to talk about when Brian started training in MMA, what Badger's like as a person, how he lost over 100 pounds in weight, what he's learned from training mixed martial arts for so long, however, most importantly, what he hopes to accomplish and why he still continues to train today. However, first, before we get into that, here are some memorable moments of Badger from his teammates that kind of depict who Badger is as a person. Okay, we gotta go deep, what are we doing here? Favorite memory here. I guess I shouldn't tell him that he almost got drunk before he made that picture over there. I'm probably not going. <laughs> he was like, I'm not going for like another five matches, it'll be all right. Go, 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 go. So one of the funniest moments, I guess best moments with uh, Badger. One of the first things I remember about Badger. Well, my biggest memory of uh, Badger was that. There was this kid that came in to our doors, I don't know, maybe eight years ago. When we first started our classes, we didn't have a competition class or an advanced class. We just had guys rolling. They were all upper ranks. He was the only white belt, really beginner. He's this uh, little scrawny kind of white belt. Kind of athletic, very fast, but didn't have a clue what he was doing. Uh, and he used to get beat up every night. I mean, like, he would get tapped so many times and I would discourage him. He came and asked me if he could do this class and I told him no. Because I said, you're just gonna get tapped out. He said, it's okay. And I mean, we really ran over this kid so bad. And I mean, but we didn't hurt him, but he was, it was a tough night for him every night. And decides that he wants to take the fastest route to get better quicker. The problem was the faster route is also the harder route. So we're telling this kid, hey man, there's a competition class coming up after this. You don't have to do it. This is the end of the first hour and a half. You know, you don't have to do these extra rounds. Oh, no, 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 I want to do them. I'm okay with it. So this quiet guy who you would never think would be willing to go this far out of his comfort zone decides to do these rounds the first night. And I'm thinking, man, I feel so bad for this kid because he's never going to come back. And I remember walking him off the floor sometimes, putting my arm around him and I telling him, hey, bro, don't quit on me. Don't quit. He said, he would tell me, I'm not going to quit, coach. I'm not going to quit. Okay. Uh, little by little, I told him, just remember one thing. If they're tapping you 20 times, try to make it happen 19. And you, you, that's a win for you. He's not going to come back after getting his ass handed to him by, I think, what at the time were like six black belts on the floor, three brown belts. Everybody was above his weight class by about 50 pounds. And he just got beat up for an hour. So I'm thinking, man, we're not going to see this kid Wednesday night. He's not going to be back. Not only did we see him Wednesday night, but we also saw him Tuesday night for another class. Then he showed up uh, Thursday night. And then he showed up on Saturday morning when we had our morning classes. And then he showed up for Sunday. And then I'm thinking, oh man, he's gonna be so beat up, he's not gonna be able to make it all the way to next week. And he shows up again. So little by little, things happen like that for him. And uh, you know, the, as time went on, uh, he did his first tournament. And I think like the first three or four tournaments that he did, and just trade out, he won first place. He, dominate everybody and just you know, by submission all his wins were by submissions he's getting his purple belt and we have we have promotions and uh professors out there he's like all right he goes and uh brian come on up and brian has this look right here <laughs> he, he didn't know that was him and in fact nobody knew his name at that point we all call him badger so then finally the professor had to say badger come on up he's like oh okay it's me it's me it's me <laughs> yeah, he was full full into the lifestyle and just was there and I credit that just because of his uh, durability, being able to get his butt kicked every night in that class in that city. And the poor kid, I'm not gonna joke to you, the lowest rank in that class was probably a purple belt. And he was the only white belt in there. And he was only like, I don't know, 16 maybe, uh, at the best. But he would take it, and he was like 16, 17 years old. But yeah, the kid would just, he was, you know, relentless. He would just come, come, come. That's probably the first indication that we thought that he was going to be something different why he got the name Honey Badger. Because after getting beat up for about three weeks, five, six maybe are coming back and he's actually coming back after us. Everybody's tossing left to right, choking him out, arm barring him. He gets out, he starts coming back at us just as hard. And so that's how he got his name, the Badger. Because he would never quit. He would just waddle across the floor and come up every night and never give up. But yeah, that's that's a. I think that's probably my favorite memory about him, as well as probably the best memory that anybody can remember. That if they've been here long enough, they remember that. It's just watching him just 
turn into an absolute animal over like what would probably be almost a six week period in which none of us thought he would come back after the first week, but he, he was there and here we are, you know, how many years later? Now, without further ado, let's talk to Badger himself. Hey guys, I'm Don Kerstetter. I'm a black belt with Texas Third Coast MMA in Sugarland, Texas with Professor Joe Solis and Professor Jason Solis. I'm sitting with Brian Gregorio Gomez, otherwise known as the Honey Badger. Badger's one of the most popular members of our gym. He always has a bright smile on his face. He trains all the time, and there's no doubt that he's one of the toughest guys in the gym with single-minded determination to be the best that he can be day in and day out. Brian, how's it going? Uh, good, pretty good. good. You, you just got a promotion tonight. How do you feel about that? I'm oh, very, very happy about it. <laughs> now, you didn't get purple, but you got two stripes on your purple? Yeah, I got my second stripe today. Cool, cool. So, how, when did you originally start training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? I started training summer 2014. Which in, in the summer of 2014? Yeah, it's before I started my senior year of high school. Okay, so you were 17? Yeah, uh, 16 you, still. Yeah, 16 going into 17. 16. How old are you now? I'm tw about to be 25. You'll be 25, okay. So you've been training then on and off for, what is that, eight years? Almost? Yeah, about eight years. So. But you had a break in the middle, right? You had a break because you yeah. got married and you started a family, right? Uh, yes, I uh, had a daughter, so I had to take about a three-year break. You took a three-year break, really, just to, you know, because you got married. Everybody understands that. And once you have a kid, you know, that's the most important thing that you can possibly do in your life. And it kind of reorders all of your priorities in life. Yeah. And I, I know up to that, though, you know, you before the family, your priority was jujitsu because you were in the gym all the time. Yeah. I rolled with you. Everybody rolled with you. And, you were, you know, you're really a force to be reckoned with in the gym. And then, you know, like a lot of people, you get promoted. Did you, were you a blue belt when you took that break? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I think, about two-stripe blue belt. You're two-stripe blue belt? Yeah. Well, you know what? That'll be familiar to everybody watching this because everybody quits at blue belt, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you came back. You came back, and I, we all thought that was remarkable when you came back. Can you tell us a little bit about when you came back? Uh, yeah, so, well, the time I, I took off, I kind of let go a little. I didn't take care of myself a lot, so I gained a lot of weight during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to weigh around, like, 160 pounds uh, average whenever uh, I left. Uh, during that time off, I got up to 237, pushing 240 almost. Okay, okay. Uh, and I know a lot of that happened because I, I kind of didn't do my part. I, I know I could have made a better effort to try to stay in better shape or come in more than I did. Um, but well, I got to a point where I just realized that I was not healthy at all. and. Um, also during that time off, not to say that I was I was miserable, like not at all, but I always did feel like something was was missing a little. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the main reasons I, I knew I always knew I wanted to come back. But at the same time, uh, I kind of saw like where I was, how like I gotten. So that kind of also like slowed me down a little. Right. But uh, I just finally um, decided like it was it was too much. I needed to make a change. I didn't like the fact that I was 23 and my best shape I ever been had already passed. Right, right. And um, so uh, my wife Leslie actually also like noticed that, and she knew that I I didn't like that a lot, and she was a, a big factor also in getting me back in. She uh, she pushed for me. Uh, she was actually the one that came down here and uh, signed us back up uh, so I could start coming in. Because um, we probably did go about like, a couple weeks back and forth where we would say, I'm going to go back, I'm going to go back, and we just wouldn't do anything. Yeah. So she took that final push to get me back in. Right, yeah. right. And I'm sure she was thinking of the same thing you were thinking. She was thinking of you being there for her daughter and your daughter. And, and I'm sure that you know, being, having gained 80 pounds, which is kind of unthinkable when you're 19, 20, 21 years old, you, don't, you never think that's going to happen, but it just... You know, it's just like quitting jujitsu. It pops up on us. We don't expect it. And then, if your, you know, if your heart's still in the right place, you can come back. And so, understanding why you came back, what was the hardest thing, other than making the decision? What was the hardest thing about coming back? What, what, when you walked in the gym that first day, and let's just say that first week or that first month, what was the hardest obstacle that you had to overcome? Well, probably the biggest physical. Uh, obstacle was uh, just uh, carrying the extra weight, so it definitely like hurt my stamina a lot. I 
I was definitely not moving the way I used to, so I had to adjust a lot in, in terms of that. Uh, and also, of course, there was a bit of like a kind of a mental factor, like knowing like I had been passed up by a lot of people I was coming up with or uh, people it, that yeah. started after me. Um, also, uh, just uh, even though I was coming back as a blue belt, like I would sometimes get caught by like a lot of the lower ranks that they were just doing it more consistently than during the time that I was off. Right. So right. There's, that mental factor played a little, but um, uh, uh, the physical also was kind of a, kind of one of the main main ones. Just trying to get used to moving around uh, or realizing that I couldn't do some of the stuff I used to do before. Right. Having to start over in that sense. Well, you know, it's funny because the, the you know you were talking about the mental factor of having to deal with uh, you know folks that had passed you by and all of a sudden they were catching you and all that. But but uh, we all know one thing is the reason you have the nickname Honey Badger is because you were so tough to to submit, you know, and you you didn't give up to anybody. So that single-minded determination, what I talked about earlier, is what. I think got you over the hump and you and I worked together personally along with a bunch of other people and and the thing about it is it's inspirational because anybody that can come back and could totally lose 80 pounds and go back to fighting weight again in the course of what have you been back now almost two years uh, it would be two years this October two years and so you cut from about 240 pounds all the way back down to 160 and what and then you had a you had your uh, comeback fight here a few months ago what 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 weight did you fight at uh, 145 145 that's unbelievable so so you let's just call it what it is it's a hundred pounds yeah. you lost a hundred pounds to come back and you had a competitive MMA fight in the cage uh, you know with all your training partners and you just did a fantastic job so let me assure you that's inspirational for everybody and that I understand that, hey, that's the hardest part about coming back, but man, nobody does it like that. That's, that's rare. Originally, when you got into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, what, what was the motivating factor? Why did you choose Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu instead of soccer or football or baseball or anything else? Uh, well, to be honest, I would see a lot of the UFC fights, so that kind of is what gave me that little, like, initiative to to look into it right um i remember when i first started looking at gyms i looked up mma gyms and third coast just happened to be one of the closer ones right uh, and i think when i started i first just tried out a mma class day, uh, that used to be part of the, the schedule mm -hmm. uh, so my very first day in, that's the only class I did, but I stuck around and saw the jiu-jitsu class and that's where I kind of got an interest just from seeing it. So by my second day in, still within my trial week, that's when I tried my first class and I just really liked it right. uh, from the trial class and I just decided to stick around with it and I ended up focusing more just on jiu-jitsu than, than anything else while I was here for probably my first first year. Right, and you do all right. So you so you do basically everything we we uh, offer at the gym. You do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You do both gi and no gi, and then you you I've seen you in the boxing class quite a bit, and I know you do kickboxing as well. And all that is necessary to uh, you know be an MMA fighter. What is the what is the favorite part of the entire curriculum? What do you like the most? I think definitely has to be the the Jiu Jitsu. What I what I kind of just fell in love with. Uh, Got it. As I started, because I know originally I came in wanting to wanting to be a fighter. I guess. Yeah, I heard uh, I, I ended up uh, just falling in love with that part of, of the sport. Do you, do you prefer gi or no gi? I actually really like the gi a, a lot more. Oh, you do? Well, you're a beast in no gi, but but I see <laughs> you in gi class all the time too. So that's good. That's good. Okay, so when you came back, you lost 80 pounds, but you didn't. You jumped into competition before you lost all that 80 pounds, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, my first competition, I think uh, we, I did it at two, 210 was the, the limit for the weight class. 210, and you had, and you, and you, you, you did you lose your first gi match, right? Uh, yeah, so I did uh, two divisions, gi and, gi and no gi, and gi, I lost my, I think I had two matches and I'll, I lost both of them. You lost both of them, but then you came back no gi the same day, and then what'd you do? I uh, won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, you know, it's funny, because what was the score? It was like... Uh, 24 to 2 or something yeah, like that? Yeah, one of them was like 24 to, yeah, like 2 or... So the same guy that beat you in Gi, you came back and obliterated him 24 to 2. <laughs> yeah. I saw the look on that guy's face. He was so impressed. And it's the great <laughs> thing about jiu-jitsu, you know, there's such, you know, a sense of sportsmanship. And he was absolutely flattened, 
you know, could not believe that you had that such a transformation. And, you know, and I looked at it and I thought, well, man, you know what? Hey, he just got the rust off the first two matches and then boom, he's ready to go. So you fought then at 210 and then you've had tournaments since then? Yes. yes. And, and, and what was, okay, so the last Gi tournament you fought in, Gi and no Gi, what, do you remember the weight there? Uh, so I kind of worked my way down. I think the first one was 210, then the next one, 185. Great. Then the last competition I did was at, I think, 170. 170. But, uh, yeah, 170 for the tournament. And I also did a super fight at 170, but at that time I had, uh, I was already prepping for the MMA fight. Right. Uh, and we knew we were doing 145 for that, so I kind of just kept cutting. So I went in like a little under on for that match. I was like, so I mean, so you fought your entire way down. You just fought your you fought your way back into shape, is what it boils down to. Back into your shape. You looked great at 185, but here you're sitting now. What 165? Uh, one yeah, like 160. <laughs> <laughs> 160. All right. Well, you looked great at 185, and then of course it, at your competition skill showed out. It was so funny because you know I know you love gi, but your 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 match when you came back, you lost in the gi, but you came back no gi and just did a fantastic job so i think you know your skill set transfers to both and that has to do obviously with the quality of the of the training that you're getting but also your determination and what have you how many super fights have you had uh purple i've had one and in blue belt i did uh Three, uh, but those were all before uh, before the break. So one of the, one of the most famous pictures we got in the gym is uh, you in a super fight. You're in no gi. What do you do? You remember your rank you were in this fight? Yeah, that was blue belt. You were blue belt. It's an iconic picture of you. Uh, you, you were uh, uh, going against another guy, and I guess he refused to engage. Yeah. And you were you and you just took a pose on the mat and waited for him, right? Yeah. This is this is an awesome picture. This is one that so many people come in when they meet you, if they ask about you, I take them up to the wall and show them this picture of you just laying there. It's just absolutely a classic. Uh, and what were you thinking when you when you sat back? Were you trying to bait him or were you just like, hey, I, I need to get this guy to engage. He needs to understand that I'm here to fight or what? Yeah, it was a, it was kind of a bait. I, I kind of had studied the guy a little. I knew he was a big wrestler. Uh -huh. And uh, so I kind of knew that if uh, it ever got to the point where I was on the floor, he would disengage. So uh, I kind of had it like in mind that right. I could pull something off like that, and I kind of went for it once I once I saw it. Right. Well, you know, it's funny because you know a lot of people don't think about tr uh, strategy sometimes when they're as young as you were. Uh, but having that strategy and being able to come back and say, okay, yeah, I got a plan for him. Here we go. Let's see. And, and I think it's awesome. And it just speaks again to the competitive spirit you got, but also to the competitive spirit of what we do. I mean, what we do is fantastic and it brings out the best in people. And I think that, that uh, the, for us, that picture, it's on the wall. We walk by it every day and we love it. You know, you come in it, you come in all the time now. You're back completely to what you were before you took your break to start your family. So thinking of that, the fact that you're here all the time, you're here at least five days a week, if not six or seven, you come in for, you know, you're here for no gi, you're here for kickboxing, you're here for gi. We offer classes pretty much every day at the gym. What motivates you to get up in the morning and say, hey, I'm a purple belt in jujitsu, I've got a family, I've got a job. What motivates Badger to come in the gym every single day? Um, well, I think this is just something I, I really enjoy doing. I really I really love this. Just um, the sport by itself is something I, I really like, and it's I would say probably the the main thing I like doing for for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I know my wife trains too, but uh, she she knows that how much this means to me, and not just from the fact that I like doing the sport, but also just just being here with uh, with all the people. I think uh, all of my closest friends are here. Uh, I think a lot of the people that are here, I've, I see as close, closer than family, honestly. Yeah, I hear um, you. I hear you. Where'd you meet your wife? Here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That's a match made in heaven, right? You yeah. met on the mats and you wound up getting married. You have a beautiful daughter. And now the, all, you're all training. And I'm sure when your daughter's old enough, she'll probably start training too, yes. right? Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great story. And, you know, luckily this is a, that kind of gym. It's a, it's a family-friendly gym. And believe it or not, we starting families at the gym. I think that's fantastic. Um, we've talked about what was the hardest thing for you to do when you came back. You, we've talked about the fact that you uh, love gi, you know, even above no gi. What goals do you have? Understanding that you're a two-stripe purple right now, 
You've had super fights in gi and no gi. You've had MMA matches. Do you have a long-term goal? Do you think about where you're going to be, say, five years from now or ten years from now, as far as your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu training? Uh, as far as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, I do uh, hope to eventually get my, my black belt. I know that's probably the goal for everyone, but sure. uh, I don't have a specific time frame where I want that to happen. I, I kind of just trust the process. I, I, I never gonna, question whatever I You're I just going to put in the work and get yeah. it done, right? Well, that's what we all have to do. And, you know, nobody doubts that you're going to be able to do that whatsoever. But, you know, we all, I think, long term, uh, it's all important for us to have goals. I've always looked at you as one of those guys that is just here, and that's never going to change. And so when you came back, it was just a natural for you to be back on the mat. And, you know, everybody was thrilled that you were back on the mat, and it didn't take any time at all before, you know, all the rust was knocked off, and it went back to being what we all thought it should be, which is you being here and training hard. You motivate all of us, believe it or not, and the mere fact that you've lost 100 pounds to come back and fight again is, uh, is something that it quietly motivates everybody at the gym. Whether they tell you about it or not, it's a, it, you know, it's just one of those amazing stories that we see from people, and it takes a lot of guts to be able to do it. If you were to talk to a beginning jiu-jitsu student today, not your daughter, but somebody that came in and you happened to see them at the front door, and they said they were interested in jiu-jitsu and they were really going to join, what one piece of advice would you give them uh, you know, in order to make their beginning of their journey and their journey overall successful? Um, I think one thing that's really important is to kind of keep a keep an open mind and staying staying humble, understanding that as much as you think you know, you never will know everything. Like there's always something to learn, something to get better at, improve on, and I think that's kind of something that's helped me a lot. I I I never get complacent with where I'm at or. Uh, or what I'm doing, I always try to push myself a little harder every night and uh, stay consistent and also understand that I, at the same time, I don't know everything, like stuff is going to happen, I'm going to find myself in positions I don't like or that I can't get out of, so uh, I'm like, you can't let, you can't let stuff like that get you down, just, you got to keep, keep going and finding, trying to find a way. Um, if you're finding yourself in a position like that where you keep getting stuck in something, just quitting is not going to make it better. You have to put your part find a, and try to find a way to, to get past it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people here that are willing to help. Um, there's not a shortage of people that you can ask and will be glad to tell you like, what they do for a certain position or, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So really, just just uh, just letting people know it's a long it's a long haul, yeah. and uh, and they got to make sure that they ask questions and get the answers that they need, and then they just keep training. Yeah. I mean, and you know, it's funny because that's what your nickname, you know, Badger. You're persistent. You don't quit. You never quit. And uh, you're one of the hardest guys to sub in the gym, which sometimes is a great thing, and other times not so great because we can all get hurt doing that. But you know, that persistence that you have, that determination, that's. That's one of the hallmarks when we look at you as a, as a teammate and a training partner, we look at that and understand that, hey, that's a quality that is very hard to teach. It's not natural. It, you know, it, it is something that does absolutely has to be developed, but it's within somebody's heart. And you got a big heart, dude. Yeah, we all know that. All right, so Badger, so we've talked about a lot of things. I mean, it's a very inspirational story. Going forward, I, you know, competition is such an integral part of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I mean, it, it, you know, for many, many people, uh, competition is where it's at. And that's one of the reasons they join. That's one of the things that motivates them to stay. They travel to different gyms. They, tr they cross train with different people. Outside of your goals to become a black belt, what are your competition goals going forward? We know that you, you, you want to fight MMA. Are you going to do some more super fights? Uh, yes, I, I do plan on competing in. Uh and probably doing more super fights here and there. I know they they help a lot in prep towards the MMA fights, but mm -hmm. uh, I think right now that's that's my main focus. It's something I want to do. Um, my wife is not very very keen on the idea of me fighting a lot, but uh, she understands it's something that I want to do. And mm -hmm. right now it's kind of the time, so we're she's letting me take advantage of that. Right. And, um, 
So uh, I mean, right now my my record is not great. So uh, my main goal right now is to turn it around. Um, I know I have a, probably a couple of years where I can still still fight uh, or have permission to fight. <laughs> um, so uh, I think my main goal is taking advantage of that and using the competitions as a prep for for that. Right. Right. Well, you know, super fights are great because you're on stage, you're in front of everybody, so you get the same sense of, you know, you're in front of a crowd yeah. and, you know, it's just you and your opponent and, you know, how you're getting after it. So when you do your super fights, it sounds to me like you're going to uh, concentrate on jiu-jitsu super fights, both gi and no gi probably? Yes. Okay. And then, you know, I understand, you, you know, hey, we all got to get permission from the boss, right? But so what do you think? Are you planning on maybe trying to do one or two MMA fights a year just as they pop up? Maybe for a year or two? Uh, yeah, maybe for, uh, I think, probably more than a year or two. But, yeah, yeah. Or maybe like two, three, three fights to take advantage of the, the medicals that are good for a year. Got it. Got it. Well, listen, you know, I just want to end it by letting you know, and, I, and I've told you this before, you are definitely an inspiration to all of us. Losing 100 pounds, coming back, competing, it, it, it just doesn't get any better than that. And, you know, you, we had over 50 people in the gym tonight for promotions, and uh, I know everybody looks up to you for everything that you've accomplished. And the great thing about jiu-jitsu is, is that, you know, everybody can roll with you and they get up and they go, man, I just rolled with Badger. He was so tough, but then it motivates them. And you know, and the thing about it is, is you're, a, you're a, just a quiet force in the gym that is able to uh, uh, motivate people just by the fact that you're on the mat. So remember that, remember that. We all love it and uh, you know, I know Leslie is proud of you and your daughter's gonna be in here one day and I just can't thank you enough for being a, a teammate here at the gym. We really love it. Yeah, I really love being here and uh, all the people here. I think I'd like to take a moment just to talk about that. Like, um, like everybody here has been just very great to me from the minute I started and the minute I came back. I, I knew I was a little hesitant about uh, coming back and just being seen different, but it was nothing like that at all. Like, just kind of like a little green rise for anybody that's been out and also looking to return. Like, everybody's here gonna have open arms and they're gonna do nothing but try to help you get get back to to where you used to be, where you want to be. Um, I think it's just some, one of the great things about this place is all the people here um, and all the professors, Professor Joe, Jason. They do an excellent job of just keeping in great atmosphere here for everyone and I think it's something that makes this place such such a great place. Do you see yourself coaching one day? Uh, yes, one day I do. I do hope to do that. Uh, it's kind of one of the reasons I do hope my daughter like enjoys this as much as I do. I hope one day I get to coach her as she she competes. Uh, I don't I know I shouldn't like force her and I don't plan on doing it but uh, I mean, she'll, she'll train here. I expect her to train, at least learn how to defend herself basics. But competing-wise, I know that's something I, sh I shouldn't force on her, but I'm just hoping that she takes the interest by herself on that. Do you feel like jiu-jitsu has made you a better person, a stronger person? Definitely a, a stronger person than I used to be. Uh, I mean, I, I know a lot of y'all know that I'm, I've always been pretty shy, like don't like talking or doing a lot of stuff, or I know I always had a bit of a self-confidence mm -hmm. uh, issue, but this definitely helped with that a lot. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it, it, having you, believe me, that quiet strength is a, uh, a huge benefit on the floor. So you're helping everybody more than you realize. You, you, hey, you've got a support system, but you're a support system for us, too. All right. Well, listen, all the best. We wish, wish you all the luck in the world. You don't need it because you're going to be in here training with us day to day. But I just wanted to take a moment to sit and let everybody know how special you are and, and uh, how special the, the, that you've made us feel at the gym. And let me tell you something, the, the, you just keep coming in every day. And every day people are, are watching you and they're inspired. And, and we use that term, sometimes it sounds like a cliche. But Brian, really, on a day-to-day -day basis, when people are able to train with you and understand what you've been able to accomplish, uh, they're motivated. And that's what being a coach is all about. So I, I fully expect one day you're going to be a coach. And you know, I don't know if you'll have your old gym or not, but you got your daughter to train. And I'm sure she's going to be as tough and smart and, uh, and capable as you are. Thanks a lot. Thank you.